Hey, good evening and welcome to Freedom of Speech and You. I'm your host, Ken, and I am flying solo tonight. Andrea will be in chat. Uh, she will explain in chat why she is not here tonight. Uh, tonight's show is Discord and chat. Um, there will be content from Discord and there will be content based on what you chat tonight, as always. So hello to Aaron out there. And uh, probably need to get the link to everyone else. So let me do that. Uh, also, there is an error. I'm sorry about that in the tweet that just went out. Uh, so that tweet is produced separately. Um, so I didn't edit that. My mistake. So it sort of makes it seem like the show is what was out last week. Hi, little pick 08 our little pick 08. So welcome. And um, so we'll have content tonight. Uh, we're waiting for Andrea to join us in chat. I think that it'll be apparent that she will join us here shortly. And it will help if I get the link out to everyone. So hang on. While I do that, So, if you hear everything, well, I do that. Okay, I'll turn that down, and I will go grab the link, and then we'll tweet it out. So, hang on a second. Hello, Andrea. So I'm working on getting the link out there. Why there's no return on this keyboard. But, oh well. All right. The YouTube link is out on Twitter. And I will send it to Andrea so that she can send it to other people as she chooses. So this is the YouTube link going out to you, Andrea. Okay, so that is done. Yeah, give me a second. I need to get my sounds back to normal. I will go grab the link. Okay, sorry about that. You have to hear me. But that's how I get my sounds back up. All right, now I'm ready to go. Okay, so as I said, tonight's show, hello, Caitlin, welcome. Tonight's show is called Discord and Chat. And um, that is because we'll have a mixture of things discussed in Discord and things that you discuss in chat. And I'm going to start off with something that is in the... Um, Discord, so, and I wish that the individual that was discussing that was here, but oh well, we can discuss it when he gets here. But there was um, something interesting done tonight. So I'm going to share the screen. And um, I don't know how well that looks. Let's see how that looks. It's too small, so let me let me make it bigger.
So let's see. Can we see that now? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Hang on. Make it bigger. Oops, too big. That got rid of it all. Okay, now you can read it. So Jim started off with the topic of jokes. How far jokes are childish and mature adults should no longer find them amusing. How it is not a joke to ridicule old people or anyone for their occasional memory losses, especially those who have very complex lives. How it is not a joke to demean anyone who has infirmities, such as needing two hands to raise a cup or spoon to their mouths or having occasional bad days when their joints don't function at 100%. How telling the same joke a couple of times is okay but repeating it over and over is just boorish. How it's not funny to interrupt people every three to four words to inject criticism before they finish their thought. And um, what Jim is really talking about is the tendency for some comedians to um, do this. Hello, Yang 2028. Hello. Yes, we should all vote. So some comedians do this, will not mention the comedian by name, but um, yeah, there is a tendency to mock people uh, and there is a possibility that that turns off the other side or those on the other side of the political aisle who might perhaps listen to us otherwise. Um, if we don't do that sort of thing. So that is kind of one of the reasons why I tend to be very straightforward. I probably make a few jokes on this show, but for the most part, I tend to be very straightforward and try to just discuss the topics um, that people want to discuss. And if you look at my social media, um, you'll see that for the most part, I don't usually post the funniest of stuff. Um, I don't post a lot of the insults. I stick to the, the explanatory content. And, um, you know, hello, Benny Loco. And I just kind of, you know, try to show the other side that might be reading my social media that, you know, this is what really happened, and this is why you should vote differently. And, you know, I don't really go into the pure sarcasm. Now, sometimes, yeah, a couple of things will be repeated and, and put out there. And, yes, it is very important, as Aaron says, to point out that they are mocking Biden and they're mocking him for his stutter and they're saying that they're perfect and yet they need two hands to drink. So yes, you know, there's a balance there and I wish Jim was already on right now. So, you know, maybe he'll be on later. Maybe he's watching and not commenting. I don't know. But there has to be a level of balance between, you know, <clears throat> How much do you just point out what the other side is doing that's wrong? And how much do you, do you go to the topic of comedic um, fodder, you know? And what do you really do, you know? Now, the host that Jim is probably referencing does really, you know, get into comedy. That's his thing. And so, you know, he's going to do his thing. That's his thing. That's his, that's his meal ticket. That's what, what he has to do to keep his audience. And so, you know, that's just going to be the thing. Hello, the liberal Dan. Good evening. And one, five, nine, 
09 broadcaster, or as we like to know him, Carl Smith. All my iPhone apps decided to update all at once. Anyway, Twitch is the only app available right now. Well, welcome, Carl Smith. Any way you can get in here. So, um, so that was what Jim wanted to talk about. Now, what else was in there? Uh, the other things in Discord were that Joe Lee said, Wow, Jim, someone hurt your feelings today. Yes, I'm the most immature 50 year old on the planet. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> I mean, I'm not 50 years old, but but sometimes I'm definitely labeled as immature. I'm actually 61. Uh, she goes on, I find everything hilarious unless it's racist, homophobic, etc. Yes. Things like totally cruel and intentionally hurtful things are obviously not funny. I tell my girls how hard it is that they outgrew me. Hello, Wes. When they're, they were 10, I felt like they more like my peer group. But yeah, you could talk about how humor is entirely subjective, not sure about straight up saying these things aren't funny, period. So there's a different point of view from uh, Joe Lee, and I hope Joe Lee joins us tonight. So Jim got to Joe Lee. Yeah, maybe we rail against the deplorables and the GOP about all the nasty stuff they say, but we say, but we fail to recognize that we contributed to that atmosphere by propagating crude and sarcastic language. We have had a hand in decreasing civility and common discourse. And because this incremental decrease has been occurring for decades, we really shouldn't be surprised that it has reached such dismal levels today. Which Andrea wrote back, Jim, are you okay? And Caitlin wrote back, I'm really confused about what's happening here. And Wes said, I think I come to these places to vent. Perhaps we can let it out here and not some social situation where your civility is important. Online is not the world, Wes points out. There are real people of all sorts in here. But as much as like as we are, we have no idea where the others are coming from. Tenderness can be found in so many other online places. This place is for self-expression. And Jolie came back with, I think that's why I was so grateful to find how at a period of time that I did lose my sense of humor about things, felt despair as I woke up every day to see what horrible things were happening in the world around me. How it reminded me that there is humor and hope to be found everywhere. I felt much more like myself since I found my sense of humor again, thanks to Hal and all the awesome people hanging around Hal. That includes you, Jim. I hope you feel better and even Wes love you Wes Caitlin gives an affirmation and um, so so Jim goes on to talk about his projects and I don't think we need to talk about that and Jolie goes on to say all throughout history our country is filled with atrocities but it gets better always gets better because there are always more good people than bad. There will always be. Look, not just at our history, but across the world. There's been worse evil in the world and even our own country in the past, but the old ways die out with the old fuckers that are still clinging to them. My daughters are in their 20s and live in Indiana where they legally lost their, their own bodies. Their bodies. But I raise warriors that can fight. Don't discredit the young. We've messed up their future, but they can be strong enough to fix it. Hey, Jolie. And we can do... All we can do is take over, keep fighting for them, with them. Meanwhile, keep turning into house and laugh at fart jokes, because no matter how old we are, farts are funny. And then the rest of it was just me saying that I was going to be late tonight. So... That is what was in discussion in Discord for the show. And that was what I started the show off with. Then, of course, uh, Andrea hit me up with a topic. Hey, good evening, Debbie. So Andrea hit me up with a topic. And let me go change the sharing. So let me kick that source out. Let me kick 
this source in. And that's the one I want. And that was okay. That's not the one I want. I'm sorry. Is that on the screen? No, it's not good. All right. At least I didn't put it on the screen. And Monster is going to remind you what to do. Become a Freedom Speech and You Patreon. Follow that link. Okay. Meanwhile, we will go back and find the content that Andrea wanted to share. So there it is. And now it's on the screen, and it would help to make it bigger. And now it's on the screen. You can kind of see so good we can play it. Oops. Hi. I want to talk about the warrant served to Donald Trump and the subsequent search of his home in Florida. Now, the FBI serves search warrants on homes throughout the country every single day. Warrants are needed. Law enforcement has to move quickly on a criminal investigation because they're concerned that sensitive materials might be in danger of being moved or concealed or destroyed. A search warrant does not necessarily indicate an accusation of a crime or the subject's guilt, but it does indicate a sense of urgency because it's only used when law enforcement can prove that a subpoena or a summons or a request won't work. The Justice Department and the FBI don't have the authority to act on on their own. They have to get a federal magistrate to approve their request. And because of the Fourth Amendment against unlawful search and seizure, they have to be very specific and convincing so that A, they can get that warrant, and B, any evidence discovered is not deemed inadmissible later in court. A search warrant must meet a very specific checklist of requirements before a judge can sign off on the decision to invade someone's home. The FBI can't just show up at your property. They have to convince a judge that they have probable cause that a crime has or is occurring. And legal experts have been very clear that not even the most liberal judge in the world would allow them to search the private residence of a former president without airtight smoking gun bulletproof evidence, knowing how political this search would be. In fact, the Justice Department did everything they could to keep it quiet. They published nothing. They leaked nothing. They even had their agents dressed like fellow Mar-a-Lago members so they wouldn't stand out in their FBI jackets. The only reason we know about it is because Donald Trump himself told everyone. Remember, this warrant has nothing to do with January 6th, with the big lie, with Trump's attempt to stay in power after losing the election. It has nothing to do with blackmailing Ukraine or Russian interference or tax evasion. This warrant has to do with the Presidential Records Act enacted in 1978 after the Watergate scandal that requires the preservation of White House documents as property of the U.S. government. In common speak, when you're the president, everything is recorded, saved, and belongs to the country. You can't just take things from the White House and not give them back. The warrant cited three things to justify the search. One, obstruction of justice. Two, the possible mishandling of government records, and three, and most importantly, the Espionage Act, Title 18 of the United States Code, Section 793, which says it's illegal to be in possession of national security information that could harm the United States or aid a foreign adversary. So in layman's terms, treason. What got the Rosenbergs executed in 1953? So let's be clear, this isn't about planted evidence because the FBI would have no access to national security information to plant in the first place. It's not about things being classified or declassified, because if it can hurt the U.S., it can't be in the wrong hands, no matter its classification. And it's certainly not about keeping mementos, because top secret information is not the same as having shack shoes in your office. And it is certainly not banana republic behavior, because this is by the book law and order stuff. Trump took things he wasn't supposed to, and when he was asked to give them back, he didn't do it. It's shady, it's deliberate, and the question is, why did he do it? Because he definitely did it. And to get that warrant signed, it's almost a criminal. Okay, so that is um, from Politics Girl, and Politics Girl is carried by Midas Touch. So check out Midas Touch, and good evening, TV2 Live. Welcome to the chat. So, um, could you hear that, everyone? Or was that loud enough? If it wasn't loud enough, um, I think I can play it again and raise the volume on it. Uh, but 
you know, just let me know if it was loud enough. Hey, Jim, good evening. Okay, so it sounds like everything was fine and loud enough, so good. So, um, it was choppy, but you got the gist. Okay, yeah. Not exactly sure why it's choppy on your end, but I don't know if you mean it was visually choppy, Wes, or if you just mean that 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 it was uh, cutting in and out audio-wise. And uh, Carl, yes, hope you have luck moving to your desktop so you can get into YouTube with everybody else. Okay, Andreas is visually choppy. Yeah, it might be visually choppy. And Wes's audio was choppy for him. Okay, unfortunate. But I guess that happens. So just the way it is. Your internet connection is not so good. Sorry about that. Sometimes it, sometimes internet is not the best. But I do realize that it's possible that when I play a video that you may not see it in its visual um, integrity. You know, you may see the video quality reduced so <clears throat> so uh earlier before jim was here we we discussed your topic jim so if you want to hit us up with that topic, again that's fine uh, but we basically discussed your topic from discord and we discussed the fact that it is possible that when somebody is a comedian and makes fun of the opposition, the Republicans, that they make it difficult for somebody to win people who could possibly be won over to our side, over to our side. So, you know, it's just hard to say. Um, and I was discussing, Jim, that, that that's part of the reason why I don't post um, – a lot of sarcastic content on my own social media because I'm not trying to uh, spread sarcasm. I'm trying to spread, um, you know, factual content. So, but if a person is in the business of making comedy and that's how they make their livelihood, then that's pretty much what they have to do, you know, to make their livelihood. They can't just suddenly be unfunny. And there's always going to be a there's always going to be a scenario where somebody says this isn't funny or that isn't funny, and you know that's part of the reason why you'll find that I don't tell a lot of jokes because I don't know what is and isn't funny to certain people, you know, and and that's part of the reason why I stick to dad jokes, uh, so that. You know, I, I get the reaction that you get when you tell a dad joke instead of the reaction that, you know, kind of throws people off. And, and it goes back to something that kind of joke that I told years ago and that I did think was funny that somebody else didn't think was funny. And I won't give you an example. So, but yeah, it's kind of like that. So... You thought I was just a bad joke teller? <laughs> no, but I do love dad jokes and I do love um, twists on words. You know, I like like a lot of stuff that that brings up stuff. Like if somebody brings up a lyric from a, a song, that always gets me started. So, so yeah. So what else did you want to talk about tonight? Uh, obviously, we could go to NPR. Uh, let me see what's on NPR, because that's usually my source. Oh, you like dad jokes. Okay. So on NPR tonight, Please name the 
Man, they say, crashed his car and killed himself at the U.S. Capitol. A 29-year-old man drove his car into a barricade and fired a gun into the air before killing himself, officials said. Authorities believe he did not appear to be targeting any members of Congress. That is the headline and the introductory. So this is from today. Articles by Becky Sullivan on NPR. Police are investigating early morning incident in which a man crashed his car to the Capitol and fired multiple gunshots before killing himself. Authorities identified the man as Richard A. York III, a 29-year-old from Delaware. The reasons why he chose to drive the Capitol were unclear, though he did not appear to be targeting any members of Congress, the U.S. Capitol Police said in a statement. No one else was injured. The incident began around 4 a.m. as York drove his car into a barricade about one block east of the Capitol. As he exited the car, the vehicle became engulfed in flames, police statement said. York then fired several gunshots apparently into the air. Capitol Police said the following, when our officers heard the sound of gunfire, they immediately responded and were approaching the man when he shot himself. And the agency said it did not appear that any officers fired their weapons. Congress is currently on recess until after Labor Day. And this was a breaking story, so there will be more to it later. So, Yes, uh, unfortunately, we are up against Richard Ojeda, Yang, 2028. Uh, so if you're going there, that's fine. Enjoy that broadcast, and we'll see you back later. And, uh, okay, so back to, I, thought I guess I just clicked that to go back. My audio is choppy, man, man. I don't know if that's you or or me, Wes Webb. Um, don't know if I'm creating it. So if I am, everybody let me know. Okay, the audio is choppy. Probably because I'm scrolling the, the video. I don't know. When Jim says nothing good happens at 4 a.m. <laughs> I won't discuss what sometimes happen at 4 a.m. because it doesn't happen lately, but sometimes good things happen. Hello, human F being. Welcome to the chat. So, okay. So, so, um, Salman Rushdie can now talk. After a stabbing attack, Salman Rushdie. Hey, welcome, Carl. Can talk and joke. Mayville, New York headline. Salman Rushdie is, quote, on the road to recovery, his agent confirmed Sunday. Two days after the offer of the satanic verses suffered serious injuries and a stabbing at a lecture in upstate New York. The announcement followed news that lauded Ryder was removed from a ventilator Saturday and able to talk and joke. His agent, Andrew Wiley, cautioned his condition is headed in the right direction, but continued that his recovery would be a long process. He suffered a damaged liver and severe severed nerves in an arm and an eye and he was likely to lose his injured eye. His um, son said, though his life-changing injuries are severe, his usual feisty and defiant sense of humor remains intact. So 
And the statement issued on behalf of the family expressed gratitude for audience members who bravely leapt to his defense, as well as the police and doctors and the outpouring of love and support from around the world. So, And they named the uh, individual who pleaded not guilty, Hadi Matar, Matur, I'm not sure I'm saying that right, a 24-year-old from Fairview, New Jersey. And the prosecutor called what he did a targeted, unprovoked, pre-planned attack. The attack was met with global shock and outrage, along with praise for the man who, for more than three decades, has weathered death threats and a $3 million bounty on his head for the books, The Satanic Verses. He spent nine years in hiding under British government protection. So. So, yep, I guess he's doing it okay. So, go back to the um, NPR headlines. There's always a lot of these people that are missing. So this man has been missing for 10 years, Austin Tice. He vanished from Syria. His family continues to fight for him. He is an American journalist. He's believed to be kidnapped. And his mother believes he's still in Syria. He was last seen in a video posted 10 years ago, nearly. So we just hope that people like that get to come home. Yeah, the trolls, the trolls do come. Um, So the IRS got $80 billion to beef up a big goal going after the rich tax dodgers. The IRS is about to get a big infusion of cash as part of the massive climate and healthcare pill passed by the House on Friday. The tax collection agency is set to receive $80 billion over the next decade. Some of that money will go to update decades old computer systems at the Internal Revenue Service and some is for improving customer service, including a taxpayer phone line where nine out of 10 calls go unanswered. Most of the money, though, is for stepped up enforcement to help the IRS collect more than 600 billion in taxes that go unpaid every year. Much of it owed by rich people who underreport their income. So the IRS so the past in the Republicans were against it. And of course the Republicans have started with their attacks. So plenty of that going on. And I have a message from Andrea, so hang on, let me see what that's about. Oops, that video was in earlier. So hang on while I see what that's about. Okay, she's got another one that she wants us to see. So talk amongst yourselves while I send that over to myself.
Come on. Silly phone won't cooperate. You're sick of Republicans, yeah. Come on. Uncooperative phone being a pain. See if I can get it there. Hopefully. All right. So. Okay, so I'm taking the chat scroll out for a little bit by request of the moderators, so y'all hang in there, see. Got to remember how to do that, too. I haven't taken it out lately. It's been a while, I guess. Do, 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 do. How do I take that out? Does that take it out? Oh, yeah, that takes it out. Okay. So the scrap chat scrolls out. Hang on a second and get this thing that Andrea sent me. Okay. That's in. Okay. So this is the thing that Andrea sent me. Let's see if I can make it a little Little. Where is that? Okay, full screen. So, does that look good? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, back to the video. Play the video that she sent. Uh, in, in corporations, especially woke corporations, white men are passed over for um, any kind of uh, or or even for being hired in the in the job place because they have to fill their minority quotas. They don't hire based on uh, uh, job ability or past experience or or even someone's character and, and ability to train them to do the job that they're hiring them for. No, it's about identity, identity, identity. And and the white male identity is pushed to the bottom of the list. Uh, in, in major corporations, especially woke corporations, white men are passed over for um, any kind of promotion uh, or or even for being hired in the in the job place because they have to fill their minority quotas. They don't hire based on 
uh, uh, job ability or past experience or even someone's character and, and ability to train them to do the job you're hiring them for. No, it's about identity, identity, identity. And, and the white male identity is pushed to the bottom of the list. Okay, you two times around. So anyway, that was uh, what Andrea wanted you to see. So you all have comments about that. Um, and uh, I'll look back over here to see what else is on NPR. Hi, Johnny Blackbird. So. Uh, Jim, Jim would, Jim would like to just get rid of the Republicans. Not, not that easy, Jim. Andrea says she keeps getting dumber and dumber. Yes, she does. She should apply those standards to the 2016 candidate Trump. Yes. So put the chat back in. Andrea says Bogart was in Clearwater today. Andrea doesn't want the chat back up. Okay. I'll take the chat back out since we have the trolls jumping in and out every once in a while. So y'all chat amongst yourselves and I'll just read the chat off the chat screen. Um, so uh, how about a little bit of um, non-political content tonight? So maybe a little bit of non-political content. So this one's about Olivia Newton-John. So in the article, Reads Olivia Newton John, a sexy nerd for the rest of us. The badness of Hollywood's favorite good girl. Tell me about it, stud. <laughs> okay, Andrea keeps hitting me up with stuff. There are plenty of catchier, more profound quotables in the history of cinema, but I'll always love this one for how perfectly embarrassing it is. On this surface, Olivia Newton-John smoldering come on in the finale of Grease introduces her character as Sandy transforms from prim prude to red lip sex pot. And where she and John Travolta's Danny each adopt new identities to appease the other. So, but only with a little imagination. Can you picture her frantic preparation for the moment, practicing that line thousands of times in the mirror, rolling the dice that Danny will say something to which, tell me about it, stud is an appropriate response. The best part is he doesn't. All he does is gawk and say, Sandy. It's a total non sequitur delivered before the same clickish case who have mocked and dismissed her for the entire school year in spite of her awkwardness. But they're too distracted by her new look to notice. So. The author goes on to say that she spent a week reading tributes for Olivia Newton.
And she goes on to say what people write in those tributes. But the author says that to her, a very young girl, a precocious child from a progressive family with an early interest in politics and feminism, swept up in questions of what being a woman ever was, was her accessibility and playfulness that cast the warm spell on her the heart. The author was in love with Sandy from the second she she arrived at Rydell Halley, apart from the fact that the author couldn't take her eyes off of her and deeply related to the desire of Sandy's character to do everything the right way while still being intrigued by the determination of the Rizzo, Marty, and Frenchie to do everything their way. When bad Sandy awake, and so did my understanding, says the author, that the two aren't exclusive. You can be true to yourself and also decide what it means from one day to the next. I've come to love the perennial icebreaker. What was your first concert? Because I have deep pride in my answer. It was the day before the author's sixth birthday in 82 that she went to go to Olivia Newton-John. So the author goes on to talk about all that in and what it was like to hear physical. Because essentially, we don't have to go, go through the whole article, but essentially, Olivia Newton-John went from being a country singer in that film. She used to be the sweet country singer, and then she suddenly became the hot sex spot, doing the songs like physical and so on, and the rock and everything. So. Not only did her persona in the movie change, but her persona as an artist also changed. At, and that's kind of what really came out about that. Okay, so Andrea says my audio is cutting in and out really bad, and I don't know if that's because I'm moving my mouse and using the other computer. That could be so. It could be because there is too much open on my computer. So let me, oops, let me close a couple of things and see if that helps. Or it could just be that, that my audio is cutting in and out for different people and not for everyone. So what say you all? And I suppose I should check my audio levels to see if I set my audio levels because I do not know. Okay, so Maude says the audio is cutting in and out as well. Okay. All right. No. Then my audio level is probably too high. Let's see if this helps. Does that help? Does that make the audio better? Because the funny thing about the audio in this program is that you know, it might look good on the level meter, but it isn't really true. And you have to like tweak it on your own and to see what works good for the audience. So I apologize for that. And it doesn't actually get saved and it should get saved, but oh well. So is it better now? I don't really know, you know, that's the, that's the thing about the internet. You never know if everybody gets the better. Okay, so the mod says things are better, which is good. Um, and things might, might change while I go off screen, so apologies. But y'all chat amongst yourselves while I'm off screen getting the link that Andrea sent. Oh, 
Okay, so sorry, that's still on the screen. Enough about that. Bring this up. So how big is that? Where is that? No, 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 no. It's there. Okay. There it is. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Can I make that bigger a little bit, maybe? Maybe that'll work. So this is what Andrea wanted you to see. Okay. So Donna Bishop writes, while the Republicans are defending the indefensible traitor Trump, Democrats and the President of the United States are delivering for the American people. And she points out this MSNBC flashcard that says President Biden's big wins, the Inflation Reduction Act, the CHIPS Act, the PACT Act, the bipartisan gun law, killed Al-Qaeda leader, gas prices are plummeting, huge job numbers, low unemployment, confirmation of Justice Kitani Brown Jackson, leading support for Ukraine, expansion of NATO, American Rescue Plan, bipartisan infrastructure law, Senate negotiating update to Electoral Count Act. So those are all the wonderful things that Biden has done while the Republicans just talk about Trump. Hey, Carl, enjoy your tea. Okay, so, so we had a little bit of non-political stuff with this stuff about uh, Olivia Newton-John. I really was like the author, very fond of Olivia Newton-John. Wes says, Texas Paul was seeing stuff like that today too. Very nice, very good. Jim says, too many people just don't remember what a normal presidency was like. Yep. Too many people have been taught to believe that, that the last few presidencies that were normal, like Obama, and the one that's going on right now, are not normal. Okay, so so we've been at this almost an hour, and looks like my camera is freezing a little bit, so I should probably kick this out of here. That will help. I think every time I open something on this computer, that probably freezes the video, or it's just freezing on its own. Debbie says, I know several people who want Biden replaced with a different Democratic candidate. Do you think that would ruin the left's chance of re-election? I think you should stick with the existing president unless he doesn't want to run because he wasn't just elected by Democrats. He was elected by people from from both parties and people that are not in either party. And so you should stick with the man who's doing the things he's doing. You shouldn't let people like TYT and those sort of people tell you that he's not doing enough for America and throw him out. Because in general, an incumbent can get reelected unless an incumbent has been very, very bad at doing what he was supposed to do. So that's the reason Trump didn't get reelected, because he was very bad at doing what he was supposed to do. He still got a lot of votes, yes, but he didn't get enough votes to win. So. Okay. 
and take this out too. That maybe will keep my camera from freezing. Because the more stuff that's in the show seems like the more it slows the thing down. So where did all the other chatters go? We have 13 people in chat, supposedly, but I'm missing a couple of people, I think, because they're busy, busy doing something. Jim says, seems like the loudest mouth on social media only have experience with the previous administration and think there is supposed to be a new scandal every day. Welcome back, Andrea. And Jim says to Debbie Lahr, it's too early to worry about the 24 election. Exactly. Let's worry about this election, which, by the way, I just wrote it today. So, uh, Aaron says, welcome back to Andrea. So what else do you want to chat about tonight? Wes says, nobody was a major standout at the last convention. That is usually a clue about future stars. Did I vote blue? Yes. <laughs> I voted blue. Most of what was in my primary ballot was kind of uh, judges. That's an interesting one where you have to like go look up and see what each judge has on their platform who they are. So I picked some people. I probably didn't pick the quote unquote favorite judges, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And Modstar tells you to check your voter registration status at vote.org. So please do that. Carl says, Wes Webb, you don't have to pick a party like Al says, choose less evil. It would also help if American citizens took their government more seriously. Civics, it's all about civics, yes. Talk about the happening this week, and so sent you a couple of things. Did you send me more stuff? Because I put up everything that you sent me so far. Aaron says, I see 13 likes. Wes says, usually with judges win if it's re-election, so I vote against them. <laughs> well, you know, I kind of just voted based on what I liked about the judges, but I, I don't know that, that, that I will get my choices. It's not a super big deal. And I'm getting messages, and my I'm stuck in that dang mode where I may have to like, excuse me, restart my phone or something because all I can see is the last message and that, that's one thing I just don't like about this. So let's see if I can figure out how to get back to the ordinary. Let me have to reboot my phone. Okay. Just every time I do this, I get within, I get within like a reply mode for my phone and then I can't get out of it. And it just drives me nutty. So I just gonna shut my phone down and restart it. That's the only way I can get back to your texts. Hmm. 
You got your link on your new podcast. Yeah, I did get all the all the ones that you sent me. I have you on my big screen, but I'm watching you on my desktop. You just put it in chat. Chat for Discord? Is that where you put it? Or chat here? Was it supposed to be a link? Because I didn't see a link. Oh, I know what you mean. You put it in chat. You put it in chat on, on YouTube. Okay, I might not see it if you put it in chat on YouTube. So hang on. I can't see links, and I'm guessing that's because I probably made links not work if you did put it in chat on YouTube, so... If you put it in chat on Discord, though, I'll go look. Nope, don't see it there. Did you put it in your own? Nope. I don't think, it, I think you can see that you put it in there, but I don't think that I can see you put it in there because I think the links are, are turned off. And that's kind of the thing that happened to me the other day when I was trying to put links in in YouTube and, and, and I could see them, but nobody else could. So just send them to me through the phone or put them on the discord either way, either, either way. But, but yeah, you're the only one that can see them, Andrea. So that happens. Maybe YouTube has turned off all links. If you put it, if you put it on the end of the,
I still don't see any links in there. The only link I see is is the one that the mod put in that that's for for it. So Okay. Okay, I see what you're I see what you're sharing and I'm going to go and get that. So that's good. Okay, so Jim has sent something and it relayed to me and it is a story that says at least 13 people injured after car plows in the crowd at benefit for N-E-S-C-O-P-E-C-K, Nescopic, I'm going to say it, fire victims. And so that is up there. So I will bring that up. And I saw what Andrea was trying to share, and I will bring that up as well, too. So hang on. So. So there's a couple of different things. So this is what Jim was talking about. And if I can make that a bit bigger. So at least 13 people injured after car plows into crowd at benefit. 13 people were injured after a car crashed into a crowd at a benefit for Nesco victims in Berwick, Pennsylvania on Saturday. The crash happened outside of the intoxicology bar. Police described the crash as a mass casualty accident incident. According to WBRE, the areas around Center Street and Berwick have been shut down. The Scopic fire in Luzerne County killed 10 people, including three children. There's no word yet on the extent of Saturday night's injuries or if the driver will face any charges. So this is what 
what Jim brought up. Okay, there was also um, something that we need to show. So there is um, Okay, and the other thing was about the man who drove his car to the barricade of U.S. Capitol began firing gun into the air before fatally shooting himself. We covered that earlier from NPR. And then there's... I could bring it up, but I'll just read it. Donald Trump signed a law that strengthened the penalty for mishandling classified documents from one year in prison to five years and made it a felony in an attempt to punish Hillary Clinton. Now it can be used against him. Oops. <laughs> so he did that to himself. There's an update to that story. Okay. Which which of the two stories? The story about the the thirteen injured or the capital story? The driver has since been caught and will be definitely be charged at least with murdering his mother. Okay. And there was also a link that Andrea wanted you to see. Yeah, I got that link. And I don't know if you wanted me to play the whole thing or not, so. But essentially, uh, Andrea has done her podcast. It's called Living In It. And there's an interview with Liberal Dan that is on there. So I don't know if you want us to play the whole thing. So let us know if you want us to play the whole thing or if you just want to point people to it. No, don't play it. Okay, good. Then people go go visit um, Living In It and um, you'll find that through the Discord for Living In It. I think most of you are probably in that Discord. So um, there is... There's a talk that Andrea did with Liberal Dan that is distinct and different than last week's show with Liberal Dan. Uh, so check that out, please. Okay. And um, if you need more help finding it, then you can find it. Okay. Carl needs the link to Freedom of Speech and You Discord channel. Uh, so I'm going to just, I'm going to play this video. 
and you will find the link in there. Okay, so indirectly the link is in there. The link is in there through the website. So let me do that for you. So So there is the website coming up. And when you go to the website, there is a link there for Discord. And I think that's the one that, that allows you to join it. And once you get that, this is the Discord invite. So there's the Discord invite. It's it's a secure hyperlink, so HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash discord dot com forward slash invite forward slash X capital K nine P capital C E three almost said wrong C three E C capital C eight capital R. That's the Discord invite. Put that Discord invite in, you'll join Discord. Once you join Discord, then you will be in the Discord, and then you can participate. So I'll leave that up for a while.
So it looks like we got a couple of people in there. I see old dude is in there. TV2 is in there. So I'm not sure that you guys just joined in, but that is the Discord server. So, so, We still need that up or not? Did Carl get in there or not? I don't know. Okay, so Carl is in there so I can take it down. Okay. Benny Loco says, is everyone here subscribed to my channel? The only reason I'm not subscribed to your channel, Benny Loco, is because you're usually on when I'm asleep. So. So anyways, I need like a longer video so I can take a quick break. <laughs> So let's talk about what is happening with Trump and the files. Ah, Trump and the files. Let's see which one can we see. Can we see that one? Yeah, it looks like we can look at that. So we should be able to do that. Okay. So here is a CNBC article. FBI search warrant reveals agents seized top secret documents and raid right of Trump's home. And I don't know that you can see that because that's probably too small for you. Let me see if I can. Oops, and an ad pops up. Make that a little bigger. Does that make it bigger? There we go. All right, good. So these are the key points. The FBI sees multiple sets of documents marked top secret from 45's home near Mar-a-Lago, according to a search warrant issued unsealed Friday. Warrant directed agents to seize all documents, quote, fruits of crime and other items, quote, illegally possessed, 
in violation of three laws related to handling of government documents. The agents took boxes of items, binders of photos, one handwritten note, and an, quote, executive grant of clemency, end quote, for GOP operative Roger Stone. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bye-bye, Roger Stone. According to a receipt for property seized that was attached to the warrant. The FBI sees multiple sets of documents marked top secret for foreign President Trump's home. I don't like calling it his home. It is not his home. It is a resort. It is a place where other people can rent. It is not his home. The warrant directed agents to seize quote, all physical documents and records constituting evidence, contraband, fruits of crime, or other items illegally possessed, end quote, in violation of three laws. Okay, we read that earlier. So that was a preliminary. Now it's written again. So, so this says you can read the redacted search warrant here. But... The warrant supposedly indicates the statutes relating to espionage and obstruction of justice are the foundation of the source of the search, excuse me. Convictions under these statutes can bring fines or prison sentences. One of the statutes which relates to removing or destroying government records includes the punishment of being, quote, disqualified from holding any office under the United States, end quote, according to the text of the law. None of the three statutes, Title 18 of the United States Code, Sections 793, 1519, and 2071, hinge on whether the documents in question were classified. But the warrant left out many details about the material seized and the government's motivation for the shocking raid believed to be the first search of a former president's home. Again, it's not a raid. It's an investigation and seizing of documents that he wasn't supposed to have. Richard Serafini, a criminal defense attorney and former Department of Justice trial lawyer, said this is really uncharted territory. Eleven sets of classified documents were among the materials seized in this raid, according to a receipt for property seized that was attached to the warrant. One group of files was marked, quote, various classified slash TS slash SCI documents, end quote which includes an abbreviation for top secret, sensitive, compartmented information. The others were four sets of top secret documents, three groups of secret documents, and three sets of confidential documents. The agents took at least 20 boxes of items along with binders of photos, one handwritten note, and an, quote, executive grant of clemency for Roger Stone, which we said earlier. Information about the president of France was also on the list of items removed from Mar-a-Lago. Trump and his attorneys have argued that the president had declassified the materials before the end of his one term in office. Trump, who has criticized the Justice Department since he first revealed raid Monday evening, has argued that his team has been cooperating with authorities. Again, it's not a raid, and he hasn't been cooperating. The spokesman woman for Trump did not immediately respond to CNBC's request for a comment. Reporting on the search warrant and related materials came a few hours before the U.S. magistrate judge, Bruce Reinhardt, agreed to unseal the warrant. The DOJ told Reinhardt shortly beforehand that Trump did not oppose that disclosure. The FBI was looking for nuclear documents in Trump's home, among other items, the Washington Post reported Thursday, citing people familiar with the investigation. 
Reinhardt agreed to make the search warrant public after the Justice Department filed a motion in court to release the document in light of the, quote, substantial public interest in this matter, end quote. In announcing the Justice Department move Thursday, Attorney General Merrick Garland also noted he had personally approved the warrant and condemned the wave of attacks on the FBI and DOJ that followed Trump's announcement about the raid. It's not a raid, <laughs> but Trump keeps calling it such. Trump and an apparent events against allegations against him claimed on social media that former President Barack Obama, quote, kept 33 million pages of documents, much of them classified, end quote, after leaving office. <sighs> the National Archives and Records Administration appeared to push back on his claims, explaining that those pages of records were unclassified and moved to a facility in Chicago where they are maintained exclusively by NARA. Obama has no control over where and how NARA stores the presidential records of his administration, NARA said. But Trump repeated the claim in a subsequent statement also asserted that the Mar-a-Lago records were all declassified. They're all declassified, he says. They didn't need to seize anything, read the statement sent by Trump's office. They could have added any time they wanted without playing politics and breaking into Mar-a-Lago. It was a secure storage with an additional lock put on as per their request. <laughs> the warrant for Mar-a-Lago directed agents to search Trump's so-called 45 office, along with all the rooms that were available for their former president and the staff, in which boxes or documents could be stored. The warrant specified that agents should seize any documents with classification markings along with boxes in which they are stored, any communications about the retrieval, storage, or transmission of national defense information or classified material, any government records created during Trump's time in office, and any evidence of the knowing alteration, destruction, or concealment of government records. Read the redacted search warrant. So this is the search warrant. which says the Nadia states hereby gives notice that in its filing the following document, redacted version of previously fire out, in this case, number seal, and goes on and signed off and blah, blah, blah. So you can read it if you want to read it on CNBC. Or you can probably find it in a bunch of other places. So, <laughs> Benny Loco says, if I saw him, I would kick him in the mushroom as hard as I could. <laughs> Wham. Yeah. Jim says, I'm not a conspiracy, but if he... Gets the GOP nomination again. The real power brokers will take him out. They need a functioning GOP to pass their agenda. So. Benny Lucker says she would. Yes, we believe you, Benny Lucker. <laughs> Betty Loco says, remember, my last name is Loco. The Democrats need the GOP or they start feeding on each other. Yeah, that is true. You do need two political parties or else there would be more trouble. I mean, a lot of people 
mistakenly say that we should get all these things off. My hands, these beautiful hands. My hands, these big, beautiful hands. <laughs> Human being says, why does GOP even want him? He's been hoarding all the campaign contributions the rest of the world have gotten if he went around. The problem is, as was said earlier today, what was I watching earlier today? Or was I watching something the other day? Oh, I know what I was watching. And you should, you should, it wasn't actually watching, it was listening. I was listening to the link that Andrea had posted earlier. And go listen to that. Go listen to Andrea's podcast. I think that was on there. You'll correct me if I'm wrong, Andrea. But I think it was Liberal Dan that said this. And if not, then it was something else that I was listening to. We're saying that I wasn't. I'm not even sure about what I, what I was listening to. But the saying was going like this. The saying was that. The reason why the Republicans hang on to Trump is because if they don't hang on to Trump and if they don't keep Trump's voters happy, they're going to lose 25% of their voters. And they cannot afford to lose 25% of their voters. If they lose 25% of their voters, they will never win anything. And so they're willing to hang on to Trump even if they lose 5% of their voters. Yes, okay, I was right. Liberal Dan did say that. Thank you for the confirmation, Andrea. So this is what Liberal Dan said. If they let go of Trump, they'll lose 25% of their voters. If they don't let go of Trump and they lose any voters, they might lose about 5%. They can still win with the loss of 5% of their voters that that are not happy with Trump. And what he's talking about is 5% of their voters may, may say, whoa, I can't support Trump anymore. And they're all going to, you know, if they're going to support Trump, then I'm not going to vote for them. I may not vote at all, these voters say. And they'll just walk away. But if they were to walk away from Trump, See you later next time, TV2. Thank you for joining us. If they walk away from Trump, they lose 25% of those voters in Liberal Dan's opinion. And that's why they won't walk away from him, because they have to have the majority of their voters in order to win it all. And so they're willing to keep the majority of their voters, even if some of them have to hold their nose to vote for the party because that will allow them to keep winning in the way that they're winning in the states that they're winning. That's a good question, human out being. After he's arrested for, uh, uh, you know, you would think that they would denounce him after that, but you have to remember that these people are they are under the belief that there is a completely corrupt government. They are under the belief that the existing government under President Biden is completely corrupt and they will do whatever is said. And just because you put Trump in jail and just because you put several of his people in jail doesn't really get rid of all of them. It doesn't get rid of it doesn't get rid of the
Proud Boys, or the Oath Keepers, or any other group like that that keeps forming after they're gone. Because even if you do get rid of those groups, even if you cut the heads off of those groups and they cease to exist by putting the heads of those groups in jail, you would still have the same people with the same thinking out there. It's, it's akin to everything that goes on in other countries. You can get rid of Al-Qaeda, but if you get rid of Al-Qaeda, you'll have another group that will form that will take its place. And the same thing happens here in the United States. So if you get rid of the Oath Keepers, you get rid of the, the Proud Boys or whatever, the KKK, whatever group you get rid of, you get rid of one of them, the snake is still moving. The snake still exists. The, the, the snake food for the snake is still out there because the disbelief is out there. And so they will keep coming back. So what you have to do is you have to convince them to vote for the Democrats. You have to convince them that this administration is not corrupt. That there is no such thing as people wanting abortion to the very last minute of life. You have to call them out, as Andrea says. Sometimes you have to use phrases that you maybe not want to use in, in open settings. But you have to wake them up. You have to call them out. Now, you don't go out there and stand as a single voice and go confront all these people on the side streets and, and you know, make yourself a living target. <laughs> but you do preach the truth and you do come across with, you know, as much as you can. And like Jim said earlier, don't just make fun of them. Do your best to educate them. You may not be able to reach all of them. Some of them can't be reached. They are beyond help. But do get to the people that you can get to, that you can help, that you can educate, that you can spread the truth. So, yeah, I mean, definitely listen to the Liberal Dan interview with Andrea. Definitely go to Living In It. Um, and I should bring that up, too. So let me do that. So it is does not look the same way. So there is a website for living in it. And that's what it looks like. Um, and it probably needs to be updated. I think I think it does need to be updated. You're probably better off just going to, to her Discord. So,
So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the link in for that. This one's only good for seven days, so please, please join right away if you're going to join. But that's, that's the link to join up to Andrea's Discord. So it is https colon forward slash forward slash discord dot gg forward slash capital G7 capital A R H M K lowercase a. So join up to Andrea's Discord. So I see a couple of you did that already. So human F being and Wes are in there. So I don't know if there's there's anybody else that needs it, but I'll I'll hide it. Cat wants the website on my Discord too, Ken. Okay. I think I think the website may need more work, but I don't know. I mean, we think that that website is good, so so let us know if um, if you need more. So I will I will put it on the Discord. That's the website. So I put the website on the Discord. I don't know if you want me to put the website in here or not. So let me know if you want it on here. Anyway, it's up to me. Yeah, I can put it in here, the website. Oops, sorry, wrong one. That's the website for living in it. Um, <laughs> thought computers were supposed to make our lives easier. Andrea says, I think the biggest thing we need to do is open our mouths, call people out on the BS and vote. Yes. Wes Webb has said, I have a feeling they were trying to bargain him down to have a respectful end, but it, he wants to go down fighting for history's sake, a lost cause. Yes.
Andrea says that they talk about that loss. They talk about what Wes said on the podcast. So, Wes, if you want to see what is going on. So. Trump makes Nixon look like a sneeze, says Andrea. <laughs> Wes says, I'll check it out. You know, I will. I stick my nose in everything. Mm -hmm. Jim says, my little sister, who is a hard Republican, is voting for a Democratic governor in Illinois this year. The GOP candidate is so extreme, not even she can take him. Jim says, not that the GOP governor ever had a chance here. And Andrea reacted to Jim's previous comment with the, ooh, damn, <laughs> as in a exclamation of joy. So... So how are you doing tonight? You think that's enough for tonight? We hopefully convene next week. With hopefully Andrea's voice back, we hope. Does anyone know when and if J6 comes back? Jim says, after all, this is Illinois, strong democratic state, even more than California. do that and probably get so next January six hearing date. When is the next January six hearing? Well, these are dated in July. So all of these are human up being says it's in September. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's what these articles say too. So I, I think we won't know more until they publish something newer. And yes, Jim, they haven't been announced yet. Do you post a schedule via Twitch, Discord, YouTube, etc.? Um, I do have a schedule that is generic. That's a calendar that's associated with the website. Um, the Twitch channel has a generic one as well. So that all that says is the time that that we normally start each week on Sunday. The Discord. I don't remember. Did the Discord get a get a, a thing tonight? But this software pushes out a um, a Twitter tweet, but unfortunately, I didn't edit it. And so, because I forgot to edit it, the tweet said the wrong thing. So, um, so I'll have to remember to, to fix that. But in general, if you're on Twitter, the Twitter account is different. And I'll show you the Twitter account that, that's actually sending the. Invite. So can I, can I see that? Can I see myself? Yeah. I will put that up. So this is the actual Twitter account that is sending out the the tweets associated with this broadcast. It goes out on a democratic journey, which is a democratic jrny and that twitter account is instructed to send out freedom of speech and you myself and andrea what is your user id for discord your name doesn't have the numbers after it Oh, my user ID. It's, it's this. That's my, that's my Discord uh, user number. And how I managed to get that, I don't know. 3176. Well, that's pretty cool that I that I got one ending in seventy six. Yeah, um, there's a long story behind that, but essentially, a democratic journey is 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 the Twitter account that I used to use and. It's associated with, with the way that I'm logged into my browser, and so it's just easier to send it that way. And the mod will give you the Patreon. So there is a Patreon. Um, 
I don't know what's in it. Andrea is the one who knows what's in it. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, the, the, where's that thing? Can I do that while I'm in this? I think I can do that while I'm in. No, I probably don't want to do that. Let me, let me find the, let me find the Twitter and I'll just show it to you. Because unfortunately, I forgot to edit the darn thing tonight and sent the wrong notice out. So. So. Instead of showing it to you, I would just I would just put it in. I don't know. Can I put it in chat? I think I can put it in chat. Is that upside down? Maybe that's upside down. Well, anyway, I'll just read it to you instead of bothering to put it up in there. But what what the tweet says when we start is it goes out and says we have gone live with the show tonight. Join us for the latest show. And unfortunately, because I didn't edit it, it says guest is Liberal Dan Radio. And then after that is the Freedom Speech and You, Andrea's, and my Twitter accounts. And they are preceded by a dot so that each of us gets included in that and so that's that's why there is um notice given to everybody and andrea has sent me the patreon which i can give to you so hang on Come on, silly phone. So I will put it in the Discord first because that'll be quicker. Why did that not work? Come on. And then I will put it in here. So this is the Patreon. So it's HTTP forward slash forward slash Patreon A-T-R-E-O-N.com. F-R-E-E-D-O-M. E E C H A N D Y O U two two. So this is the Patreon for our show. And Andrea is in charge of that. So we will be at some point announcing what we will do as far as Patreon specific shows uh, once we are ready to do that. And um, at that time, then we will give you the information. So. What's the link to the Patreon? It's on the screen. It's it's http 
colon forward slash forward slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot C-O-M forward slash capital F-R-E-E-D-O-M capital S-P-E-C-H A-N-D Y-O-U-2-2. So again, we'll do some kind of special shows and all once we get it set up, but we're not ready to do that yet. But the idea would be so it it probably doesn't work from the chat. You probably can't do that from the chat. So let me just see HTTP. I mean, that is, that is the link. But it won't work from the chat. So you have to type it in yourself. And the reason it won't work for the chat is because the fact that I chatted it in the chat, it's not going to work from YouTube because because you can't visit a link from YouTube. So you have to put that link in. So you, so just go, you know, go to patreon.com, search for Freedom Speech and U22, or, or just, you know, type that link in yourself. Again, there's the link. And whether or not it works for you, I don't know. You know, it might work for the mods. It might not work for anybody else. So, like, it might work for Andrea. It might work for me. But it might not work for for you. And, um, you know, if... If Patreon doesn't work, then, you know, we may come up with, with some other way. But let's just wait and see how we're going to do this uh, content, what platform it's going to be on. Probably going to be on YouTube. Can't be 100% sure, but we have to find out how to do that. So, um, I think the link is already in Discord, or do I need to put it back in there again? I think it's already there. So. So it's already 10 o'clock for me, and I'm ready to go. Um, I just typed that though. So I will post it again in there. I think it's probably already there, or I will post it there. Yeah, it's already there. I already put it there. So
<laughs> Benny Loco, I'll find you. I'll subscribe you. But you got to tell me when you're on. I mean, if you're on in, in, in my sleep hours, I can't help if I don't participate. I can subscribe to you and increase your subscribers. That I will do. I will increase your subscribers by one. But but will I be there if it's after my hours? I don't think so, unless unless I'm suffering from insomnia. And yes, please go go into the Discord and tell us the subjects you want to talk about. Can you be on earlier your time? That would give more stream time until you poop out. Normally I'm on earlier. Tonight I was on later because because I went shopping in the rain and I had to to uh, you know dry up, put something dry on. So that was part of the reason why I was a little bit later tonight. I was about a half an hour later than usual. Um, could I be on earlier? Um, possibly. One of the reasons why it's usually 7.15 my time is because that's best for Andrea when Andrea participates. So thank you for participating, Jolie. So but there will be times when I will stay up later than this, and I think you get used to that. Um, can I be on 1 p.m.? <laughs> Ooh, wow. You really want to come on earlier. That's too early. Because um, that would really cut into my time. I mean, that's that's kind of when I usually lunch. So, no, not that early. And and also, there, you know, if we did need something um, from this show, the recording will only last four hours in the configuration that I'm in. So... You love a Sunday afternoon show. Um, maybe for the maybe for the Patreon show, there might be something of an afternoon show. We'll we'll have to see. But that is really rough for um, some of the people, and it, it a lot of it has to do with whether Hal comes on. And, and, you know, keeps people working. So it is, it is what it is. And I'm also trying to do my other show. I haven't actually got back into it. But there is a total other show that I'm trying to do that is not political. So I'm hoping to get back into that show as well. And um, so let's see. So we'll see. What happens? All right. So I'm going to play the outro. Um, you guys can. I do another show. Yes. I will briefly mention that show. Hang on. Because I haven't done it lately. So. I will, I will briefly mention that show. And I, I hope to be getting back to that show um, shortly. So I'm going to share the website for that show. And this is what it's called. So this is what the other, other show is called. And no, it is not on this channel. Um, it is on the other channel, and the reason for that is because it is not political. It's called Slightly Off Access Podcast. It gets its name from the fact that when I first did it, I was doing it um, with my phone camera. And so the view of me was slightly off access. And so that is the reason for the title. But essentially, this show is about um, 
it's the show is about being somebody that is not working at the space center who likes to talk about space. And so I wanted to talk about space and do something different. And so I wanted to interview my uncle, but I never could. My uncle was an employee of Boeing and he worked on the Apollo program. And so what I do with this show is that I interview people that work with this space program and I've interviewed a few of them. And so that's, that's what that show is about, but I'll tell you more about that when it's actually in production. So anyway, but because, because it's about space and because half roughly half of the people that work with the space program are um, the opposite political party. It has to be on its own thing. Yes, I'd like to talk to Carl. I probably will. Um, I'll reach out to him again. I did reach out, talk to him once before, so I'll have to reach out to him again. But yeah, I just mentioned that. So we'll see what happens. Um, I do have an episode coming. I don't want to talk about it until it's a done deal. Um, there is another thing, too, that that is um, going to be, because I did that show, there is an invitation, and I'm set up for it. There is something called... Let me look at the name of it here. Is it on my phone? I think it's on my other device. Got what it's called. Oh, I know what it's called. It's called Wisdom. There is a podcasting app called Wisdom, and it's kind of like a, they may not like the reference kind of like a tech talk like thing where you talk and you you get together with people and you bring them together and you talk and it's it's an audio podcast so what I'm going to do with that show is I'm going to do a, a two-tiered approach I will get on wisdom and I will introduce the people that I'm going to talk to on the live video talk show and so we'll 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 talk. We'll do a little audio podcast. We'll tease the audience about what's coming up on the video podcast. Then we'll do the video podcast. And the reason why I'm going to do it that way is because it takes so long to do conversion from video to audio. And when I first did uh, video, I was using this kind of a microphone setup and that was really annoying because it was picking up all the noises and the mic would scratch my clothing and it would just pick up the noise and so i have to go back and like edit for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to take a one hour show or two hour show and turn it into audio that anybody would stand to want to listen to so Plus, I take out all of the pregnant pauses, as we call them in the business, and I take out all of the breathing and the other sounds. So, yeah, it just takes a long time. So, so anyway, I want to say one final thing before I close the show tonight. I want to congratulate Andrea for doing your podcast. I want to congratulate her on doing a great job. I think you should go listen to Living In It. You will be impressed if you've not already listened to it. And that's all I really wanted to say for this week. And you all have a great week. Hopefully, Andrea will be back next week. And we'll bring you another show. 
And if we have a guest, we'll bring you a guest. And I will get the uh, tweet right next week because I will go fix it now. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining me. And sorry for any of the uh, pauses, screen freezes, um, glitches with the audio because the audio wasn't adjusted to the right level. I have to remember to do that. And um, when Andrea is back on, I want to set Andrea to the same level too because I think that will possibly fix the problem that we've been having with the audio. Um, and we'll see. Thank you so much. Good night. So let me go find my graphics.